um, we're recording. Yeah. And this is the class that I'm going to talk about faces. Yay. I had a, a couple of problems before this. Uh, mm, Quill was crashing on me, so I hope it doesn't happen again. Uh, <laughs> it's been kind of like, I think it's because of the, um, uh, when you pin the windows on your Oculus dash, sometimes that happens. Uh, so it's a little unstable. But anyways, um, welcome to this class again. Yay! I'm pretty excited about this because I'm really, I really love drawing faces and people's uh, characters. I do caricatures myself. I don't know if you've seen some of my my uh, caricature stuff. So this is a subject that is really uh, close to me. I really like this subject. Uh, um, I observe people's faces. I look at, pe at people's faces a lot, and I, I and I like to analyze and and figure out what's so interesting about the face of people and everything. So yeah, let's talk about. And I brought this picture. Especially, I like this one because you can see all these different faces, right? Uh, I recommend watching this show if you haven't. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get down to business. Um, I want to talk about what's um, so interesting about the faces for me when I draw characters and people. Um, the elements on a face is are always the same, like just like when you draw uh, a human body as well. But especially the face, even though they all have the same elements, they all have um, eyes, a nose, a mouth, and a, and a basic structure, right? Um, but look how different each one is and how much personality each one has and how different they are, even though they have the same complete, the same elements. And it's all about proportions. It's all about distance between parts of the face, right? So if we are looking at uh, proportions, in uh, when I do portraits of people, I normally tend to, uh, to take measurements. If I look at the uh, eye level, and then suddenly I look at the nose level and I look at the mouth level and the chin level and uh, the base of the hair. So those are measurements. Those are things that you can measure by distance. And it's not very, it's not mathematical at all. The way I work when I draw is very like, you know, just calculating very roughly by eye, you know? So I try to think, okay, the uh, if this is the the whole of the face, the half of it, the the fifty percent mark would be more or less where the nose is, but just a little bit lower. So it's not the fifty percent; it's just a little bit lower than the half. So I I take that measurement. Like let, let's take her face for example, and I say, okay, that's the beginning of the hair, that's the chin, and if I do the middle of it, the very center of that. More or less is this, right? So that's where the eye level lands. So that is different for every person, right? So like the eyebrow level and then and the beginning of the hair level, so the forehead level. So there's a proportion there compared to the nose level and the mouth level. So all that, it's uh, interesting to calculate the proportions of each person, right? Because it's different. Like, look for example of uh, this guy. His forehead is much smaller compared to this guy. There's a there's a smaller proportion here, and the the distance between brow level and nose level is bigger than this guy over here. Um, I'm sorry, the eye level versus the nose level. So he has a bigger nose. He has a bigger distance here. And then distance between nose level and mouth level, I would say it's more or less the same as this guy, maybe a little bigger. So all these measurements are very important 
to figure out when you draw faces for the first I mean not for the first time when you're learning how to draw in traditional drawing right and then the other thing that I wrote down is silhouette and silhouette is also very very important uh, when you look at a person's face, um, you're not just looking at here to here. Also, you're looking at the everything, the hair, hairdo, ears, right? And then the connection with the neck and the anatomy of all that. But uh, the silhouette that it's creating around the, the face is so particular and it's so distinct. Uh, it's a huge distinction. Um that also sometimes is, is like a symbol, almost. It's almost like uh, this person has this silhouette and it's unique, you know? It has that, especially uh, a woman with uh, long hair, the silhouette outside of the face, it kind of, sometimes that's that's it, you got that. Uh, and, and that's enough sometimes to recognize a person, like... Some, person, some people have a face shape as a triangle, Right, and you immediately recognize, oh, that's whatever. And some some people have the shape of an inverse triangle. Oh, sorry, I just did the same thing, <laughs> uh, like inverse triangle, right? Some people have that silhouette, and some people have really round shape all together with the hair and the beginning of the of the hair. And, and most people have oval shape. You know, it's like the, the most common shape, right? And then, yeah, I think that's kind of really important to to take in in, in account when you when you start drawing faces. I recommend like when you're if you're not experienced in drawing, uh, I recommend just looking at pictures and and try to figure out okay what's what's the shape? Is a triangle? Is a rectangle? It's a tapered a rectangle or, you know, um, what kind of a structure is the silhouette, right? And figure it out from there and then start looking at proportions and measurements. So th those are the things that I look at normally. And then I wrote down a structure because obviously anatomy is really important when you're drawing a face or any part of the body of a human person. Uh, Obviously, we need to learn about anatomy and what's going on inside, right? So we knew we know there's a skull inside of each person, and the skull has a particular shape. Let's try to figure out the skull on this guy here. Um, so the skull has the nose holes here. We have the uh, the teeth, uh, more. I'm, I'm drawing a very cartoony skull, skull, but just to it's kind of it's kind of good to understand what really is going on in there. Uh, in order to, especially when you draw in three dimensions like we do in in quill. So the 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 jaw lines are not flat. They're obviously they have dimension right and the same for the, the 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 teeth structure all the teeth line and everything they're not it's not a flat line so it's a bit of a curvature right it's like a cylinder yeah pretty much and then this this the nose obviously it's is, there's no bones inside, <laughs> so there's just a, a pair of holes in there. And then when you're, draw, you're drawing the circle, but also it's, it goes back that in in depth, right? That circle. So you you have to kind of get that in 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 the structure there, the three dimensions of, of that skull. And these uh, were supposed to be the the cheek lines, um, the cheekbone, right? You can really see that cheekbone over here in this character. So that goes over there, 
any kind of, and I know this structure by heart because I've been studying this for years and I almost don't even think about it when I draw it because I know what's what's in there. And it's very recommendable to really study anatomy uh, in a way that you already know it by heart because you draw and you've drawn that anatomy so many times you you know what's in there right um well that's really bad skull but uh the idea is uh kind of knowing what's what's affecting the skin right so we're we have the structure here of uh of the whole of the of the in the if this is a skull the eyes are basically floating balls that are in this hole. And all around the eyes are it's just meat and skin, right? And these muscles that are, that are kind of uh, hugging the, the eyeball. Uh, and here there's a connection between this corner and this corner. And there's a nice, like, a corner you can really separate the two. It's almost like you, you when when you have lighting, you can really see a difference in, in, in the lighting here because there's a nice corner here in the in the skull. Yeah, it's like the sides are cut off. Yeah, and it's really good to emphasize that when you're when you're drawing because you're it's gonna help you to have a structure in your drawing, right? Um I think that's more or less why I wanted to talk about about this. I guess it's good to have it in the back of your head when you're when you're really sketching a, a face, especially in VR in three dimensions, because we we need to have that structure in place, right? So, um, how am I doing in time? Uh, it's at uh, about fifteen in. Oh yeah, good. We have plenty of time. So I'm gonna maybe instead of being more like a lesson, I, th I thought this would be more like a demo. So I'm just gonna maybe start drawing and 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 not do more of a not do not do so much of a class and do more like a demo. So I'm gonna just just looking at the picture and try to figure out. And I want to show you more or less what's my process. I'm going to look at this guy's face. I like this guy. He's an interesting face. <laughs> so um, how do I start? I don't know. It's just I'm very – it's very organic the way I start um, uh, just uh, – okay. We, it's the only profile, this guy, but it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna do like almost like a profile, but I tend to do three quarter sketch first uh, when I do faces, and then in VR, um, obviously we need to have all the surrounding, uh, all the three dimensions and everything. But I normally start like this, and I'll, and you're gonna see why. And it's better to me doing that than doing a profile or a front. Uh, okay, what's his mouth is something like this. That's kind of kind of nice, big, meaty lips. The chin goes there. And it's, I guess what I do a lot is try to get these corners to really be very defined, right? And and when I even even in, in Quill, I I already draw in the third dimension. I, I don't do because when I started working in Quill, my tendency was to draw a face like in the, in two D. That was my my process for the longest time. I, d I did this, and it's, uh, it's it's all flat, right? And then I what I would do is just grab the elements and kind of make three dimension 
out of it. Just two and a half dimension, right? Just kind of get these little pieces and move them around in space. And now we have a little bit more of three dimensions. And that's what I would do for the longest time. Just start 2D and go into a 3D later. But uh, lately, I, I become much more efficient drawing in 3D. My hand is more trained, I guess. And I'm, I'm already comfortable just moving my hand in three dimensions. So when I draw the jaw line, I'm already thinking in the third dimension. And my hand Dad, is already... Was it frozen for you? Oh, you guys are. No, I see it. I see it. It's, it's fine. All good? Yeah, for me at least. Uh, I'm I'm in Northern California. Maybe that's why. Mm. Yeah, it's mine. still working. Hey, Daniel, for me. can you spin around? Can you spin around that head? I want to see how 3D it is. Uh, this one. Yeah. Can you oh, spin I, around this, it? This one I just started. Oh, I, I see. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I just nice. started, uh, cool. so it's not completely 3D right now, but if you can see the no. draw. But it's three quarter. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm working on three quarters. That's to, interesting. To Very start, interesting. To start with. I was with. wondering. This, mm. is my, this is my process. I start with the three, pro, uh, three quarter, and the jawline, I'm starting to really get that three dimensions in. So um, once I have the jawline, I start to connect some dots, right? And I start to get that structure, that anatomy in, in there. And I'm already moving my hand in three dimensions in there. I'm not even starting to do flat and then later uh, move it in space. I I'm already, that, that ear gives me a, a nice connection point with the, with the jawline. So, that's so interesting. It's almost like you're drawing it like a 3D relief, like the back of the head that you don't see is yeah, flat, and then something. everything else comes forward towards you in 3D. That's that's amazing. So that's my process because I feel like that's the the way I feel more comfortable. But everybody draws in a different way. But as you can see, this little gesture. It's so simple, but it helps a lot. So I, that line that I started, the, the forehead line, I just grab that sketch and I move it a little bit in, around. And I try to feel the, the three dimensions of the forehead in there. You, can, you cannot see on the flat video, but I'm moving my hand like in a, in a 3D space. So oh, yeah. do, doing that really helps a lot to visualize, okay, that's going to be the forehead. And even though it's not final, but I, I, I get a better sense of the three dimensions now. And the same for this, the, all these sketch lines here. I'm just going to move it a little bit in space to connect with that. And now I have a better, a better three dimensions on, on that. So I slowly, you know, but first, first, I, first I try to get the silhouette of the, of the guy and try to get that similarity and just, just try to get this portrait of this person. Um, let's get that curly hair. And I don't see the rest, but I'm gonna just make it up. And I draw it almost like as if a 2D drawing, but also my hand is kind of fur, far. Like I'm, I'm moving my hand in three dimensions here and this is the the back of the head, so I'm just gonna get that back of the head more or less, and the the neck. It's very important to kind of establish more or less the dimension and the thickness of that neck. So I I draw this collarbone line, and that gives me a clue of how thick is the neck more or less. And that's all I need to get a, a feeling for the face. And then the other important bit is the um, the hairline, right? The the connection between ear, forehead, and how how is exactly that hairline that the character has? And that's kind of more or less with some some of these curls that are coming in. Okay, that's kind of a basic structure, and I have the eye line here. And it's not completely three dimensional, but it's good enough for me to. It's it's a suggestive. It has a uh, it's 
it suggests three dimension, even though it's not completely three dimension. So I'm just gonna get those eyes more or less sketched out to give me a an idea of what those eyes look like. And then I'm gonna start grab tooling around. And the grab tool is really a lifesaver for these kind of jobs. I mean, this kind of work, um, working with phase and stuff. Hey, Daniel. Yep. Do you find uh, when you go back to 2D sketching of faces as like, do you think you're improving from doing all this extra 3D kind of sketching? Or what, what's your experience? In terms of, does it just feel the same? It's kind of... Um interesting for me because I feel like I enjoy more sketching <laughs> in Quill than in... in, it, in than it looks in, amazingly fun what you're doing right now. I'm like mesmerized. And it's kind of... You, it's so quick for me to get this done and I, I get a profile, I get a... The, okay, the front doesn't look very good. But, <laughs> but, but the, three, the, the, third, the three quarter looks okay and I get a feeling for the character... Um, uh, I'm just gonna get those. I mean, yeah, out. I've worked very similarly when I'm, especially how you're saying how you originally did completely 2D and then tried to force the 3D on it. I did that exact same thing. Yeah, when I first same with out. me. Same with me. That's what I thought you did actually. Mm. So, and notice that I never draw the back of it. I don't draw any of this stuff <laughs> because that's enough for me as a as a guide. I don't need any more. I don't need to, to keep drawing the other ear. I don't need to do the rest of the jawline. It's fine because this little wire frame sculpture, it's enough for me to understand the three dimensions of, of that face. So I can, but then what I normally would do is use grab tool to really tweak this stuff and make it even more three dimensional. So grabbing grab tool, Inside of the head, it's kind of um, pushing around, just kind of get that bulging. If the you know the front face obviously it doesn't look good, but I grab this part here, and I just kind of deform it so the each side of the of the face has the same measurement more or less. I just kind of get that going in there. Um, Profile, just to kind of figure out what's the profile like. Uh, you know, grab tooling really helps a lot to to get everything with the right proportions and gotta be careful it doesn't look too smooth. I think I distorted this a little too much. But yeah, normally I would do this kind of stuff. You know, especially especially on the eyes, I do this kind of thing. So. It's really but, interesting to see you work this way because I'm so used to just doing the lathe technique with the sphere and then trying to shape the face around it like yeah you can do you can do that tool. after you can totally do the lay thing after you have the the, the sketch but mm -hmm. for, for me the sketch is essential because i wanna i wanna have a blueprint first of of what the you know like in traditional drawing if i do like a rough light pass you know a light draw right yeah then, it seems uh, really so I, helpful I might be jumping the gun here because it's probably something you're going to get to, but how uh, accurately do you follow this sketch? Like, are you, when you're assembling your face, like for its kind of final pass, are you really adhering to what you've got here or are you more so just using it as a very loose guideline? Yeah, this is a very loose guideline. Um, I try to keep it uh, as a reference more than anything. And uh, sometimes I try to preserve, you know, some some of the sketch lines that I do have because I like them so much. So I try to preserve those if I think they're important for the portrait. Just make sure, for example, the 
the lip, everything, I think, I think it needs to be really sharp. So I'm just trying to get those corners very defined. And then later, these corners defined is going to help me to figure out how to build it in Quill, how, how to make it um, with the tools that we have. Because Twill has limited amount of tools. And, and that's what I learned uh, in the last couple of, especially working on Remedy, um, learn with the tools that you have. Uh, I mean, learn to work with the tools that you have um, and make the most out of it, you know. So let's. I'm gonna talk about that now when I when I when I clean up this. Um, we we do the final model. But before doing the the final model, I, I just go around and and I do what I'm doing right now. It's just uh, really uh, just try to tweak those proportions and everything to make sure that it looks looks right um, obviously the eyes I haven't done anything so I'm just gonna make sure the character is the character that I want to build before I build it because building takes a long time and it's it's you know it's a process to build with with quill oh, yeah. with, the, with the tools that we have mm -hmm. uh, so I before spending all the time, so I, I really want to get the sketch nailed, and, and and that's what I did with my my mother caricature as well. I, I spend a lot of time with the sketch face, just make sure that she looks exactly the the way I want it, and then after uh, I started building, and yeah, the eyebrow uh, grab tooling, the eyebrow is really important as well because it gives you that structure. Of the skull, right? So eyebrows are very important to to really have a three dimensional. You know, they 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 seem flat when you see them from from the front, but in three D they have this this corner right here, and that goes in depth, and it kind of follows the structure of the skull. And this this there's like a corner of the skull right here. What I was talking about before. Let's try to get those things in, right? And here, again, the structure of the the the, the cheekbone of the on the on the skull, all that stuff. I try to do a little markers, especially with the the face of this guy, which is kind of very um, sharp. It's a very different to do this kind of face, and then doing a a girl's with the very soft features um, and that's that's a different type of but I, I would even even uh, even with soft features I would try to I would try to establish lines to kind of figure out the structure right the, the skull even, even though that, those lines are going to disappear eventually because it's supposed to look like softer um, I'm kind of looking you now. You are about 30 minutes in. Okay, 30 minutes. Okay, let's. I think it's a good time to start building. I just want to get those. He has a thicker eyebrows, I think. I should have done Berlin. It's okay. <laughs> On next week's episode. <laughs> yeah, this looks week. awesome. No, you're capturing him totally. Yep, kind of piggybacking on what you said about the eyebrows. Those I was making a face for um, my Mother's Day piece too, and the eyebrows pretty much like changed everything when I put them in because they're your like high visibility almost like contour line following your form. And yeah. it really is able to make the forehead and like those uh, planar shifts pop. Totally, yeah. And again, it's uh, it's not only really great for expression. They're very expressive devices for, you know, communication, nonverbal communication. But also they're great for structure, to, to get that structure of the skull. And it gives the drawing a much better, you know, uh, 
uh, more solid drawing. Right? People always talk about, oh, you have to have solid drawing. You have to have, and and to me, solid drawing means knowing the structure of what you're drawing, the internal structure, and kind of um, making sure that you you apply that. Okay, uh, doesn't really look like him, but, <laughs> but it's it looks fi- good. It's fine. It's fine. It's just for the demonstration purpose. Okay. Uh, so what I would normally do now is um, do another layer. So this one we're gonna call it rough. And that's gonna be color. Okay. Here. Sorry, I'm I'm obsessing about this a little bit now. For no reason. Oh, you're good. We all do the same thing. Mm-hmm. For no reason. And that's why I'm not so fast as Goro. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, he just goes for it. <laughs> no, yeah. Anyway, it's not good to talk about somebody he's, if he's not in the in the room. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure he'll be. It's not polite. <laughs> it's not polite. No, let's, let's not he's probably that. commenting. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure he'll be watching through later and be like, Tyler, stupid forearms joke. <laughs> Daniel, right. do, you, do you use this uh, quill stuff? Of at work, like actually for work. Or, no, I mean, no, I wish. No, you can't. Oh, I wish there, I wish there was a so way useful. to do it. I wish there was a way to uh-huh. really use it. Uh, but it's just so complicated because I have to export the animation from here into a FBX and then send the FBX to the the Maya scene. But then, how do I sketch something if I don't have any reference? So I have to. If I want to have a reference, I have to export the geometry from the Maya scene to a, a, I don't know. It's just it's just too complicated um, to get it going. So I yeah. Plus, what I do at work is just animation. Is I'm not doing any character modeling or design or anything like that. So I see. So when we start building, we we already start choosing colors. Obviously, um, I'm not gonna be really accurate right now with the colors, and I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do a lot of lighting. But I, I will do some some just different colors just to obvious to get that structure to make sure that we feel this, especially well, the you know the the sharpness of his face, right? So normally what I do is just get a nice big circle. Uh, a start with that, just as just as a base. And the good thing about this is because it's completely symmetrical, right? And I have this kind of center line here that helps me organize my work. But it's not that's going to be just the underlying thing. I'm not going to use this a lot. I just, it's just going to be something that's going to be underneath everything. And I normally gotta get the thickness tool and then just kind of make a little smaller on the bottom, right? Uh, and that's kind of a that's good for now. I don't need much more for now. So the tool that I use the most is this guy over here, Capitalist. And the reason I use it is, is because it's, it's, it's like flat, but it also has a little bit of three dimensions. So it has this kind of thickness, and it has a little bit of round roundness on the on this on the shape of it. And this, to me, it's almost like when you're doing clay a sculpture, and you grab this stripe, the pieces of clay, right, and you just put them in there. So let's say I want to start building the jawline. So I get this this thing here and grab tooling and get getting that um, thing in there. Uh, 
and I'm gonna see if I can make that really round to get a nice kind of gradient out of it because the one thing is really important is really knowing the tool like I said before and knowing what you're working with so you, I know how quill works I know that I know that uh, a stroke you can deform it in this way you can make it bigger and smaller that way but you cannot just make it like that if I try to do that it's gonna bend it so if I want if I want it to be bigger this way I have to use the thickness tool and that's gonna make it bigger in, in this direction right and the same for the color if I I know exactly how this works because I've been working in quill for so long and I know that I have a gradient that's gonna go in this direction the same direction as the stroke if I want a gradient the, the other way I'm not gonna be able to do it horizontally it's not it's just not gonna work it's gonna it's gonna keep using this direction so if I want that I know that I have to do the opposite I have to do a stroke that has that direction right so knowing those things it's very important because that's like I said before you know you know your tool and you you try to make a take advantage of of this part of this tool and here instead of um, just gonna I just I'm not gonna do symmetry I just gonna just do the same thing <laughs> I really don't I don't mind uh, I could do symmetry but sometimes it's just faster. <laughs> I just do it like that, and that's it. Yeah, they they need to really improve that the way you do symmetry, but that's okay for now. Oh, <clears throat> Daniel, when you uh, modeling this, do you also think of like in terms for animation? Uh, depends of yeah depends if I'm gonna animate the character or not in um, but yeah for animation especially for the mouth it's a good idea to do this process because it's gonna make it easier when the, you do the deformations so for the li for the lips what I do is I use this one here it has a slightly different shape no actually no 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 no, no. Forget that. I'm gonna keep using this guy because no, which one was it? Is it this one? I know. I guess it's this one. I I forgot. Oh no, yeah, no, that's right. Oh yeah, this one has different shape on the top and different shape on the bottom. So what I would do is use this one that has like a flat on the bottom and use that as the as the lips. Okay. So it's almost like uh, working with clay. You have these pieces of clay and then you this you deform them and you put them in your sculpture. And I try to use that sketch as a guide for how all these pieces need to be there. Uh, gonna get this. Uh, okay, so let's do another one for the bottom. And I want that kind of flat here. And that flat tip is really useful for mouths because now we have this kind of interior of the mouth in there that's really useful to have, especially for animation when you want to deform this with the grab tool uh, and do different poses. It's going to be more anatomically correct. You know, you're going to you see the jaw pivoting in the right place and deforming the lips in the right place. 
and if you just if you just want the lips to be affected you just you can use this and to do the different mouse shapes and the the way this is distorting is really cool it, it feels like a lip it kind of looks like a lip you know it's really really so i use this a lot it's kind of interesting because isn't Aren't your strokes kind of almost aligned in the same way you would almost 3D model a character in Blender or Maya to deform when animated? Uh, I guess I don't know because, because I I really am not a modeler. I don't know how to. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know any 3D modeling. <laughs> <laughs> no, this yeah, is, it's this is the closest thing it, that I've done to 3D modeling. You know. Yeah, there because I've I'm not a guru editor or anything, but I know that you have to build like the um each plane on the face is in a certain way because if you don't, they deform. Yes. Uh, um, really nasty. Yeah, totally. yeah. No, that's right. true. But that's totally. the way you've got the strokes built, like built here, it almost is operating just the same way you'd have to build it. So like you've got your job done, right? The lips curving over in that way. Yeah. And that's kind of following the anatomy, but at the same time it's good for animation. Mm -hmm. So you're, yeah, I mean, of, those are, that's how that's the really muscles cool. of the, mouth are actually structured right they're like a exactly. tube around that, your face that's actually the, yeah. that's actually the, the real anatomy of a mouth the real like, anatomy i yeah, know because i'm taking an ecorche class daniel which is like in clay and you're totally right everything you're saying i mean all the strips exactly so you, you you have like this mm -hmm. this this clay strips and you're using that as a way to uh structure your your model and grab tooling is basically your your biggest friend because you're just modeling and distorting everything and getting those. Yeah, you're you're getting you're saying exactly the same things as the instrument. Yeah, and Quill is. It would be very. Yeah, and Quill is such a fun tool to do this. It's much easier than modeling with Maya or ZBrush or anything like that. At least for me, I mean that. I mean each person, obviously has a different way of working. But for me, it's just so much easier to do that because it combines sketching with modeling. And I'm, 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 also, more, I'm much more of a sketch artist than a modeler myself. It also removes a lot of technicality from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like in 3D modeling programs, you're having to constantly sweat over uh, how many points are in your planes, uh, how your planes interact with the other planes, how they're going to move, how they're going to deform, if you're if it's to be animated. But for this, it's just kind of put a stroke in, move it. Yep. You're done. T totally. Yeah, yeah watch your also policies. In, those model, in those modeling programs, bringing in a sketch the way Daniel did is literally impossible, let alone you know sketch it in the program and then start modeling. So like that's unique to Quill as far as I know. Because you, you normally have to do like the reference photos that you've drawn and then cross them in 3D space. Like one's a front view, exactly. one will be like a side view. The graphics, yeah. And this and that's is usually like how I work 3D. kind of in Quill. When, like I was, I'm comparing how Daniel's making a face to how I've made my faces in the past. And I tend to uh, take a couple of faces that I want to combine together. And not, you know, replicate completely, but I'll combine them to make, like, a new face that has the features of both and put them, like, one's the portrait, one's the uh, uh, frontal view, and uh, I'll kind of highlight, like, you know, the jawline or the cheekbone, hairline, eyeline, and then kind of piece it together. But I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how he's uh, constructing it because the way he's doing it is way better than I've done it. This is so cool. Cool. I'm telling you, I'm like inspired beyond belief. It's really cool. Um, I was gonna say, Daniel, this really reminds me of like the way the muscles lie over the face. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you've heard of the Riley method, but um, there's like this thing called abstraction where it shows like the different muscle rhythms going on in the face, and it connects very similarly to how you're doing it. Just like everything interlocking in order to make like a cohesive structure it's really cool and the other thing i thought about about knowing the tool and using it to your advantage right so because i know each one of these strokes has a gradient that, that i can work with with it right so i'm planning also my lighting as well as i'm doing my strokes so 
if I have this stroke here for the forehead, let's say, and I have to be careful of these intersections, uh, because I know the way the gradients work in Quill, I can totally do this soft shadow here that is going to define the, the, the forehead. And this one could be a little bit sharper. Just gonna, I can get a little sharper color right there. And it's really, uh, it's really all about okay, planning. Well, th you know, that's why we have the sketch because that allow allow us to plan it better. But also planning for when you're building, planning for your lighting. So a good idea also is to have some sort of reference. In this case, I have a picture, but if you have a drawing that you did yourself in 2D, that also can help you a lot to uh, to plan. And then when you're building, you're also building and you're kind of drawing the light at the same time as you're building the geometry. So it's it's really uh, it's really fun to do this in this way. And in my in my experience, so the nose. For the nose, I'm going to use more of a round brush, the, the, the circle sphere brush. And it's kind of a little divided into uh, two parts here. Maybe I can do two parts of the nose right there. And uh, really taking advantage of the thickness tool as well. It's really important because that gives you that nice kind of soft deformation from there to the the breach of the nose, right? And kind of using grab tool as a way to move vertices around as well. Because in, in modeling in Maya, or the traditional modeling with uh, any 3D package, you're basically moving vertex around, right? With grab, with Quill, you can do pretty much the same just with using the grab tool, right? If I only want to move the vertex here, I can just go like that. And I only move this vertex right there, right? And I know because of the influence, I know how many vertex I'm, I'm grabbing. So it's, you know, applying some of the knowledge that you have in 3D modeling as well. But uh, it's m much more fun this way, obviously. Um, Daniel. Hi. Do you, yeah. ever find, do you ever find that you wish you, you could uh, tessellate, like, add more vertices to work with? Yeah, the, uh, if, if I have to plan this in advance. So if I want something to be much more high density, for example, this stroke, I want to make a higher density. So I, I go zoom out and I make a really huge uh, version of that stroke and then just reduce it. And that has a bigger density in geometry right there. So you can uh, doing that. You can do things like like those little bumps if you need to. I use those bumps to, for example, if you do clothes that have some sort of uh, wrinkles, I use this a lot. Just kind of to get that little wrinkle, mm. wrinkly okay. shape. Yeah. But for this nose right here, I don't really need that that much geometry. It doesn't really need to be that high density. So I'm just gonna. Let's keep it simple. Hey, Dan. So have you ever gone back to the lathing method that you first started with? No. After I discovered this method, I was like, why am I going to do lathing? I mean, <laughs> I, I feel I have more control over... Because sometimes you want sharp uh, hmm. shadows. You don't always want soft shadows. Depends hmm. on the character that you're building, obviously. I mean, this. I'm not saying this is for everything, but I'm finding that to do faces is just really useful to do it this way because of the things I'm talking about. Um, yeah, sharp shadows are are something that I, that I really like to do in, in, in traditional drawing. So uh, this is my way to do those sharp shadows, just get, getting those strokes you know and again i'm gonna use the flat section here to really get that nose uh nostril 
just okay. a heads up, you've got about 10 minutes till an hour. Okay. Let's get a little faster. <laughs> just. It's also cool because I, uh, whenever I made my face, I used um, Dan Frank's uh, kind of mesh like thing where he uh, yeah. overlaid the uh, rows of strokes over each other. But this is so much more uh, performance friendly. Yeah, economical. Yeah, it has a, a lot of advantages. It's uh, it's more anatomically oh, man. awesome. Yeah, it's, ana it's anatomically player. correct, and at the same time, you're saving strokes and you're saving geometry, and you're animation you're, friendly. Animation friendly <laughs> and uh, sharp, sharp shadows that are so important sometimes. Um, also, uh, the way you described these strokes in Quill, I had no idea about the asymmetrical nature of that stroke. That it was flat oh, on yeah. one side. Yeah, <laughs> this 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 stroke is kind of funny. It has it has this flat side here, and it has is like a <laughs> sharp knife over here. For some reason, sometimes that's the it's way. Sometimes great. <laughs> sometimes it's awful. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, this I don't, I don't like this, but then suddenly you one day you realize oh, hang on, this has a huge advantage. Let me use it. So totally, because the body is like that, right? It has a combo exactly. Look, uh, uh, yeah. eyelids edges. Eyelids are so easy to build with this thing because you just you get you get this really nice third dimension to the eyelid that you you wouldn't get um, otherwise, and you get you can get much more precise modeling this way than if you go about any other technique, right? Like you can have an actual eyelid in there that you can close and you can animate that later. You can do like a proper blink right and it has like the inside of the eyelid the part that is pink i don't know <laughs> yeah Just you could that part duplicate it and shrink it down yeah and it's, it's also the way you build in z frankly it's just that it's you know a little different but you you do you are building in that way mm. exactly and you're being anatomically correct at the same time which is uh also a good thing because when you turn around the model it's going to look properly you're not going to see all the lumps and all these weird strokes. Like, if you look at the silhouette right here, that's clean. You know, it's exactly what I wanted. Hmm. You know, and you don't get those lumps. Yeah, because all you the, know the, the sp spaghetti uh, uh, strokes yeah, that Quill yeah, you're has. You're building it on a strong foundation. It makes sense. It's Totally. Yeah, I have a I have a sketch that I did, and that sketch is my 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 guideline. Um, and I also try to do facet facet different you know facets of the of the three three D model in here, for example, to really define the eyebrow and trying to get the different the, the different parts of the of that uh, volume. Hmm. Which is going to be useful later when I do lighting on this. The eyes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a mirror because it's, I think it's worth it. It's worth to do the mirror because they're so, they're so tricky to, to get right. Sometimes the eyes, mm -hmm. the eyeball, I don't draw hmm. a, a sphere. I just do a stroke and I just bulge it, and just that's it. And I, I that really I, works. I'm pretty much using nice. always the same and uh, a little thickness to get that uh, thickness. Okay. If I get thickness, I know it's gonna it's gonna be horizontally thicker here, so it kind of fills up that. In case I wanna animate the eyelid to be open more or whatever, close it. And the same for the uh, eyelash. Just gonna get this eyelash shape. Uh, I think sometimes I just do like a just a regular hand uh, free hand stroke instead of and that, and then I deform that and I just put it in there to get that nice, uh, you know, thick tapering, you know. And for the 
for the pupil, what I do normally is the same thing. I just try to get high density, like a nice round shape. So I do a very quick, just a single line. Sometimes with this is better. Just a, boop, a, a little press on the, on the trigger there. And it gets that really nice circle. And that it's your pupil. Oh, just that's make, so cool. Just make sure that it's, oop, that it's there. And the eyebrows, uh, just going to do kind of this that same color. Just a, just a freehand stroke. It's enough for that. And then grab tooling just to really put it in, in its place. So let's get that and just mirror all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so would there be any downside to just um, doing half the face and mirroring it? Um, like no. At the end? No, really, there's no downside. I just did that way because it's faster for me, but uh, you could totally do half and then mirror it but if, uh, you know because the strokes are so easy to do <laughs> I'm, I'm just like i'm just gonna just do it again i don't care <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so let's just mirror that because this is harder to do to get the right shape for the eyes and i really want them to be mirror so let's just do mirror just for the eyes uh because they're very important that they're exactly a copy of each other otherwise they start to look weird and obviously this is not going to work perfectly but that's okay because phases in real life they're not perfectly mirror so that's that's not a problem honestly gives it character <laughs> it gives its own character yes I want to watch a movie with characters in it So this, I discovered doing this um, while working on the remedy. Uh, I was trying to really get the shapes of the protagonist really sharp. I didn't want her to look w with uh, soft shadows and stuff. So I decided to start blocking things out this way. And I, I realized, oh, if I follow the anatomy, it just looks so much better. And I... I I just went through that way and I discovered, oh, well, this, this is a much better way to build faces, honestly. <laughs> and al also, I was trying to be economic because of uh, the project was supposed to be on Quest. So I was also trying to get that. Uh... Actually, these guys are going to be different color. Okay. Um, color. So we got something going on. <coughs> we uh, hide this, and we got <coughs> the next part of the process will be to kind of start filling up all these uh, gaps and stuff. But uh, you know, you got a we got a good base already. Kind of sometimes I just kind of start doing some some of that. Just unify the colors. That looks so cool, Daniel. And I need a little more strokes here. So we the... have just hit an hour. Oh, okay, so I guess that's enough to to show <laughs> you the process. <laughs> you get the idea. Man, um, this is so inspiring. I love seeing this. And also, like, 
it's so cool to like, oh, I can do this shadow here now because the the the, the nose is projecting a little shadow onto the onto this part of the face, so I, I can hmm. get that working there. And obviously, that's not the end of it because uh, you can always grab tool the whole thing and make sure, you know even if you're you had a good sketch, it doesn't matter because maybe oh, I wanna I wanna fix this, I wanna make this shape a little more expressive this way, a little bit more cartoony. Maybe I can make the nose a little, or maybe the whole front of the face can be a little further, or no, the other way. And because I'm rotating my hand, I can just rotate this a little bit like that. And get more shapes in, in there that are important for me for the, for the portrait. And again, the lighting, it's uh, so much easier to, to plan and to figure out if, if you have this limited amount of strokes in there. Uh, I guess we don't have any more time, but let me just do the lips quickly and then we, call it, we can call it done. So, oh yeah, I distorted this a lot now, huh? <laughs> Oh yeah, well, an important thing is the bottom of the jaw. Uh, that's something that's um, normally left over that I forget to do it. <laughs> and and when I realize I haven't done it, I'm, I get into panic mode. So a best the best way that I realize how to do it is just get a darker color, obviously. Uh, and then just grab that and then just move your the thumbstick as you draw the um, the stroke so it makes it thicker at the bottom uh, at the at the end is that all right and then i use the thickness tool to get that in there just try to get that nice uh, sharp corner More or less. This needs to be thicker, I guess. Yeah, it's a bit tricky to get that right and make sure that it doesn't show up too much. Here, yeah, just gonna... it should be only visible when you look from below, really, unless it's a character with a softer jawline. Um, I use the the neck shape also to 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 connect with the jawline, uh, and what I do is just normally just kind of use the thickness tool there, and that gives you that nice connection there with the jaw. And the lips are tricky to do. Especially people with uh, thick, meaty lips. Those are hard to do. Um, but before that, I will do the interior. Um, the interior is going to be completely dark. Just going to bend it. It's not, it's not, it needs to be a little thicker. Okay, so the lips are pretty thick, so maybe, maybe the, the brush, the sphere brush would be the best. I'm sorry, it's going to be a little bit more red, more pink. Uh, in the case of this guy, I'm just going to do maybe more, more, more geometry. And 
and maybe I'll do half and half. And because of that flat end in there, it gives you like a nice sh sharp corner. And then reduce the thickness in there, in the in the in the corner, the mouth corner. So maybe I'm just gonna do a half and half for this guy. That also doing the half and half also will help with the lighting if I need to do different shades of light. And the bottom one, maybe I'm gonna do just one one stroke. Just make it thicker on the middle. And grab tool. And here the ideal thing is that the, these strokes are on top. So that way we have this nice sharp, sharpness in there. <clears throat> so here we have all of this stuff. Maybe I just grab tool everything. And the the bottom of the nose is is pretty is pretty tricky too. I'm just gonna get that sh similar similar way. Just gonna get that. Shadow color there. And grab tool it. And for the nostrils, I'm just gonna make it like a dark color. That's it. Ah, doesn't matter. That's not. Ah, doesn't matter. Uh, all right, let's just finish this. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much. This is Matt. You're welcome. Thank you for sticking. I, I wanted to no. finish it in the one hour, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> uh, hour and ten, whatever. It's it looks good. great. All we right. get the idea. Curly hair, you just go loop-de-loops on it. You're good. Yeah, just, just paint it, and that's it. <laughs> I'm very curious if you ever wanted to pick this up again tune in because it's really good maybe i can just do that maybe let's uh unless somebody else wants to do a class uh, next um saturday let me save it and yeah, maybe that would be amazing. Then next week i continue if if that's all right man are you kidding me it's I uh, that. it's uh <laughs> and that's we can start gift. Cl cleaning up all yeah, this stuff you'll... here and You'll be done once you have every face in that picture done. Yeah, <laughs> we can do all the faces in, the, in Money Heist. <laughs> all right, guys. Funny you say you're not a modeler because you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Hit about, Thanks, man. hit about 30 viewers today. That was cool. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for sticking. Oh, awesome. awesome. See you later. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording now.